So let me introduce myself. My name is Chris. I'm a gamer. I play games a lot. And I was born deaf. I can speak, but I prefer to sign. Because when I speak, a lot of people miss, mishear things or misunderstand things. So um, I'm here today to share my experience as a deaf gamer and how um, games are not always accessible to deaf people. So um, right now he's setting up my slideshow. Um, I had to throw it together last minute. So it should be really fun presentation to share with you all. Can you tell us um, a little bit about your uh, streaming? OK. So I use, well, Tara, we created a design for Mixer. Here's the M and the X for Mixer. So log MX, sorry, the logo X. You have it on your shirt, Mixer. If you could stand and show your shirt so people know what we're talking about. The logo with the X, yeah. Thank you. So I've been um, streaming now for three years. I've been really involved in for like five years or more, but this is like, it was really fun when I first started, but one day I was playing a game with someone and that game was not accessible. And I got really frustrated and I stopped playing the game for a while. So I tried to research on the internet and figure out what kinds of um, deaf accessibility games there were, and there really wasn't much out there. So that got me thinking what I can do. Because at that time, um, I was feeling pretty depressed from personal stuff, you know, and um, I was in the red till like, I needed to do something, you know? I needed to do something to help myself at that point. So I got uh, to try and figure it out. At that time, I knew that a, deaf, a deaf gamer TV. So I thought about what that deaf game TV, what the goal would be for that. So I wanted to raise awareness through games. I wanted to be um, an advocate and a representative of deaf people so people could hear like, oh, he's a gamer and he's deaf, but he can still play even though he can't hear. Um, if you were playing the game like Destiny, obviously it's really, you know, sound heavy. There's a lot of communication involved. So to be um, able to communicate quickly, to be able to um, read the game, read the game, I had to figure out how I would do that. It just, it just proved that there was no accessibility. So I felt that this was really important and a good time um, to help technology grow. It's 2018, and you've noticed some games are still outdated. They're using old. Um, techniques and you have to follow like they really need to be following the new the new stuff now so I feel like we need much to improve their technology okay great <laughs> okay so now let's go ahead and start why subtitles are important more than you think so here's what I'm going to talk about <laughs> the clicker's not working. Okay, so this is um, why subtitles matter, why they're important. So here's me. Looks nice, right? Okay, so um, I was born deaf. I love playing games since I was a kid from age one. So 
excuse me, from level one. Um, a lot of them don't have closed captioning. So how I could understand um, what I should have been hearing during the game was like, you know, through closed captioning, if you had that. Um, accessibilities for games, for the deaf, and hard of hearing um, gamers. So I had to figure out how I could share my experience um, to create more accessibility. I wanted to show what games look like from a deaf perspective. I hope that you love pizza also. <laughs> Go ahead. So what does it mean, um, simplicity? Or sorry, excuse me, subtitles. What does that mean? For the audience to understand what is happening in the game, or a movie, or whatever, um, whatever you're watching or playing, it helps us to identify and the audio cues that we can't hear. Um, and then ringing sounds and things like that when we're walking along, if a phone's ringing in a game or in a movie. Um, sometimes I transliterate for people who aren't native English speakers. They can get um, a lot through that, through the subtitles, through reading it. And people that have um, dyslex dyslexia, it can help with that a lot. So why should things be subtitled? So in the games and movies, you have to have, you have to have subtitles. A lot of times um, when you start playing a game, often the game will go directly to like a movie screen section. And it's really important to subtitle that movie portion or uh, the trailer. That needs to be subtitled also. Like um, when we're talking about the character itself and the character in the game, they're talking and their mouth is moving. That is all we're seeing. So we don't know what they're saying. We're just walking around. So it's really important to have that subtitled also for the deaf. And people will know um, someone's talking to you. Otherwise, we'll just walk around them. Like in Destiny, for example. We're walking around. If a character starts talking to us, um, most of the time, it's, folklore. it's a folklore talking, and we can't even understand it because the subtitles are not there. So in the game, um, they have music. Um, it's not important necessarily, you can't really caption music, but like if um, you're getting close to something and the music's like, the sound is going higher, like in Resident Evil, that game, as you get, you know, there's zombies approaching you, the music changes, right? There's some drums and stuff. So if you can um, give people a chance to respond to that, it kind of gives you a warning, basically. Um, So my background, background music and noise, like um, during the games, like in Alien, most of the time, like it's quiet in the game, right? In Alien, but as you get closer to feeling like you'll hear these noises of things pop, pop, popping over, but we don't hear those. So our characters get attacked every time. And it's like, damn. So, um, I'm always trying to um, let people know and tell people that like, if you want to have accessibility in a game, if you want your audience to be able to hear you, then you need to make it readable for people who cannot hear also. So that's why, um, I, that's why this is in all caps. So my next example, is that I borrowed from a friend. This is a good guide 
what sh about what should be captioned or should be subtitled. So should this movie be captioned or subtitled? That's the first question. Does the game have dialogue? Is there talking? Then obviously it should be captioned. You should caption it. Does it have sound effects? Then yes, you should caption it. That is important to us. That is important that whatever people hear, we need to have that information. And if it doesn't have any sound at all, then you, then you should caption it. <laughs> it's important because to people who can hear the audio cues, so for example, this. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Yeah, no. So that's why it's important. Sound, import, sound is important to people, to the gamers. Now I want to show you a bad example, what that looks like. That is too much. I'm not trying to read a book here. <laughs> I'm trying to play a game. So good caption tries not to be a huge amount of text on the screen. Because I need to be able to see what's going on in the game at the same time that I'm able to read the text. So I can visually go back and forth between what's happening in the scene and, and what the text says. I'm not gonna spend all this time reading a huge lines of text. So I don't recommend something like this. Oh, and this game is called Deuce X. And this is actually in the game when you start the game. Oh, wow, that's like a huge amount of text that you have to read. It's just blocks of text after text after text. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to play the game. I don't want to read all this text. <laughs> But that happens, that happens on the stream. You'll see that on, the, on my stream. But I might miss some important information because of this huge amount of text that I just don't want to read. <clears throat> so this is Destiny again. And this block of text is okay. This is from the loading page. So you can see it's a spacecraft flying through the sky and you read what's happening at your next, your next mission. So what's the problem with this? It's not high enough contrast. The yellow on this bright background doesn't really work, especially if people have like color blindness. How are they going to read that? So it's really difficult. Luckily, in their next their next game, Destiny Two, they've improved this. So it's it's a it's a good font with black black text. So this I don't recommend doing something like this either. I recently got interested in a game called Mass Effect. My friend was trying to get me for a couple of years to play this game and to, or to put it on my stream. And I thought about it and I thought, okay, sure. So I played one, two, and three on the PS3. And then later on the PS4 and the Xbox, I have Mass Effect Andromeda, that's M ME4 basically. Um, so what's the problem with this? Do you see a problem with this? 
Yeah, it's really small. It's tiny. So people in the back, can you read this from there? No. So I understand the developers, they're working at their desk, they've got their computer screen right there in front of them to do whatever it is that they need to do to fix things. I get that, I get that. But who are you making the game for? Who's the audience? What are they gonna do? Is all of the audience sitting at their desk playing this on their computer? No. No, they're at home. They're lounging on the couch with their game. You know, they just finished work. It's playtime. They want to play a game. They maybe got a beer they're drinking. They're just chilling. But after you drink, after you drink the beer and you try to read this, what's going on? That's too small. I can't read that. So it's important not to do this either. And if your friends are developers, game developers, please remind them not to do this. So what can we do to improve having subtitles and captioning in games? Well, it's just like people have already said, be involved, be included, be inclusive. Understand who you're playing, who you're making the game for. If you have any kind of scope or guide, guidelines for the game, I really do hope that there is something in there, a section in there about accessibility. So when you think about it, about, the, about captions or subtitles, you think, what do I need this for? What's it for? You don't, but most people don't think about it until they really get in depth into accessibility in gaming. So anything that you hear should be subtitled. Any sound, anything. And there's, it, there's many good reasons for having it. If you have kids in the room and you don't want to interrupt whatever it is they're doing, you can hit the mute button on your TV and continue to play because then you can read the captions and the subtitles to know what's going on. And you're not disrupting kids, wife, husband, whoever else is in the room. It's always important to find people in the community who are advocates for game accessibility. That way, it's really easy to get the right information than to just try to figure it out on your own. You know, figuring out how, how to be deaf if you're not deaf, for example. You know, I, I'm deaf and I can't hear when I'm playing the games, so I'm a resource. Deaf, T, deaf Gamer TV is a resource. If a game has no sound, it should still have some sort, it should have some sort of subtitle or caption. Most of the time, I, I, I don't understand what's going, what may be going on in the game because I'm deaf if there's no caption or subtitles. It's also important to ask clarifying questions, like of the deaf community, for example. What problems do you face in playing games? And take notes so that you can understand what, they, what it is that that audience needs. But it's important to interact and engage with that community. You have to include, and you have to include all disabilities. Ask questions of all the people from all these different communities. How, you know, you could ask, what do you struggle with when you play, your, when you play games? Um, Get, get the, because you know, knowledge is power. So get the information. It's also really hard for you to mimic a disability. So maybe in a movie it happens, but that doesn't happen in real life. 
And that really just touches the surface of what, the, what a disability may look like. Other things you can do to improve gaming for people with disabilities is let people have options, an option menu before starting the game. A perfect example, do you know the game Far Cry 5? When that game, when I started that game and it started loading, wow, um, that game starts loading without captions or subtitles. And Tara can attest to this too. Um, is there any way, for, I asked her, is there any way for us to do it like we do in a movie, add some sort of captioning or subtitles? And right away a patch went out to make, um, to make that loading screen captioned. So that was kind of a relief to be able to watch the game, watch the uh, intro. Without captionings means you just have to wait forever and it's not interesting. You have to wait for it to load and then you have to go into the option menus, then you turn the captioning on. It just takes forever. So it's, you sort of lose the excitement of playing the game because you miss that intro video. So you should always have an option menus before the game actually starts. You should also allow players to adjust the captioning. For example, his example, uh, Brandon's example of Telltale Games. Um, you know, you, you should be able to change the text size, for example. If you want to add speech, like a name or whatever, who, like who is speaking, you, want, you need to know that. So that should be added in the captioning too, that this character is speaking and here's what they're saying. So that would be good for communication. Also color. In the game, let me think here. Um, Tomb Raider. Different people have different color texts for their cat for the subtitles. So who's talking depends on what color, and that helps you differentiate who is talking. Oh, I remember that character's yellow, that character's red, or whatever. Font size, um, that's pretty important too. You know, some people might want to have use their own font. In one game that I recently saw called Agony. Have you seen that game? Has anybody seen that game? Yeah. So have you seen the captions on that game? So in that game, the subtitles and captions, they kind of suck. <laughs> because, let's see, I'm trying to remember exactly. But um, medieval, um, their font is it's kind of fancy, you know, with these all swirls and and stuff. But in the game, they use that for their captioning, <laughs> and uh, it's too small. I have a video I'll show of it later. But but that game, wow, it's really bad. <laughs> but if you wanted to use your own font, you know, all the time, you, you can't do that in that game. It would be much better if they had, if there were some choices, maybe three to five different fonts that the players could choose from. So then they could pick the one that's easier for them to read. And here's my pro tip be as inclusive and involved as much as you can. And what do I mean by that? You as a game company or a game developer, if you say, we want to be inclusive, but your team doesn't actually do it, that's a conflict there. So all people on the team have to be on the same page. 
if you say we want to be inclusive to to better the world then you have to do it if your team doesn't follow that doesn't abide by that that makes your own bo your boss look bad especially Phil You know, you don't want to make him look bad. <laughs> so where can you find my Twitters? Right here. My email, defgamertv, defgamerstv at gmail.com. I also have uh, Twitch and Mixer right there. It's pretty easy to find me. Now, I wanted to show you um, agony captioning. I want you to really think about this and remember what this looks like. Oh, I found one here. You see that? Can you read it? See, that's the other thing I mean by, you know, white text on sort of a light background, it's really hard to read, aside from the font. So, okay, I have to stop this right here because it's rated M for maturity. <laughs> Might be some nudity. But, um, but that's pretty much the end of my talk, and I'm ready for questions if there are any. Does anybody have any questions? So an example or two of games that do this really well for the deaf community? Uh, most of the time I would say telltale games are really simple, easy to read. The subtitles, I don't have any problems with those. Let's see, other games, um, no. The, the short answer is there aren't good examples, <laughs> period. Um, I, I talk about subtitles, yeah. I, I talk about subtitles a little bit in my talk and video games don't do it well. There is not one example that does everything right. It's, well, Tomb Raider did this, but this other game did this, and this other game did this. And if you mash those games together, you would have a good example, but there is not a single, yes, you should go look at this, because no one does it well. She's right. She's right. So I have a question. Unfortunately. <laughs> I have a question for you about the best placement for subtitles and captions. Sometimes the games have subtitles that appear over an important part of the title. Hmm. Oftentimes when you start the game, as a deaf gamer, I expect subtitles and captioning to be there for important information. But as a deaf gamer, I may not be sure what other information I'm missing because of the focus of the subtitles. So that's sort of something that has to be figured out still. We need to tell developers that whatever kind of information you want the players to know, it has to be in the subtitles or the captions. 
otherwise we get stuck. We don't, we don't, we miss that information. Um, so um, I'm curious to know, are you using any social features in video games like chat or multiplayer? And then how are you using them and how can we make them better? So we need to test um, speech to text on this. For example, my friend who is hearing, we play a game called Forza. It's a driving game. Um, and there, we do text to, there, there, we, have, we chat a lot, usually with a keyboard. But it would be more fun if we could use you know, the headphones and the headsets so we can make it more interactive with us, with, our, with us playing together. So text to speech, that's one. I'm, or speech to text to speech, speech to text is one example. But there are some people who just don't like to read. If you play a game, for example, Rainbow Siege 6. In that game, there's a lot of competition. And you don't really have time to read what other people are saying. So it sort of makes you feel frustrated if, um, if you're chatting, if not, maybe not in the game, but you're chatting maybe through typing or whatever, and you, um, you're trying to figure out how to easily understand each other quickly. That's one way. But, but how do you emote when you're typing? There has to be another way to understand each other. So really, to solve that in the game right now, I don't know, there's a lot of ideas out there. But we need, to, we need developers to actually apply those things to their games. So uh, we're gonna call it here. Uh, I, one thing I wanna teach you before uh, uh, Chris gets off stage is that in the deaf community, uh, applause, people don't applaud like this, we applaud like this. So thank you so much, Chris, for your uh, presentation.